Hi everyone, this is Liz with The Restless Wild and I'm so excited to share my January 2021 bullet journal plan with me video. This is my first monthly plan with me video that I've posted so I hope you enjoy it. I recently set up my yearly spreads but this is my first month in a fresh journal and I am certainly excited for a fresh start with blank pages and a new year. Goodbye 2020, good riddance. I'll drink to that. <laughs> oh. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So once again, I am using my Archer and Olive A5 Night Sky Blank Pages Notebook. So my theme for this month is navigation and navigational instruments. For example, sextants, compasses, stars, etc. I drew inspiration from a bunch of different sources for this, including the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction back in December. I don't know if you all saw it, but the two planets were basically closely aligned and looked like one massive star in the sky, which was pretty awesome. I also do get some inspiration from my notebook cover. It has the Big Dipper on it and that keeps making me happy. But also too, it's just winter here, which means long nights, bright starry skies, things like that. And I'm also fondly remembering a trip I did this past fall in October. Well, trip. it was a local trip, micro trip. Uh, we went a couple hours away to Staunton River State Park in Virginia, so just over the border in Virginia. And I did a midnight trail half marathon with some friends and it was awesome. Some friends, as in like a friend. Um, <laughs> socially distant, <laughs> outside, camping out in the cold under a bright starry sky with the Orionids meteor shower going off above us. It, it was amazing. Um, this park is a designated night sky park. And so I am always a big sucker for bright starry skies. I do very much love those. But also too, some inspiration came just from the concept of it being a new year and finding my direction and purpose in 2021. So yeah, starting off with drawing a sextant and I will talk a little bit more about the sextant and some other spreads, but basically a sextant is a navigational instrument where you use a celestial object and the horizon line is where you determine the direction based on angles. It's a basically a glorified protractor. <laughs> Who all remembers using protractors in, in grade school? I certainly do. I I love my protractor workbooks. I did, I'll admit it. In addition to the sextant, I am also drawing a few of my favorite constellations, including the Big Dipper, Orion, Cassiopeia, and the Pleiades. What I don't enjoy though is drawing really sharp lines and precise things like inanimate object um, and using a ruler. Um, I pretty much never use a ruler. I hate it. I love freehanding things. I'm too lazy to use a ruler, but obviously I'm using one right now. Um, really because I just, I wanted the sharp lines. Last January, I did a theme where I also used sharp lines. It was all keys, like antique brass keys. And I also hated myself for that because I can never quite get the proportions right. I don't love drawing straight lines. Um, <laughs> so it was a fun challenge for me. And so I was remembering that when I was thinking about this theme and I was like, Liz, you're not going to enjoy all these straight lines. Like, don't do it to yourself. And sure enough, Y'all, you, you did not see all of the sketching and rework and redrawing that I did leading up to this. Um, it was a lot and it was somewhat frustrating. I almost abandoned the scene, but decided to keep pushing through. Um, finally got it right. Lots of measuring and ruler sketches later. Um, one of the things that is really important to think about when you are working on sort of inanimate objects that are very symmetrical is the use of negative space. So not necessarily focusing on what your drawing outline looks like, but also paying attention to the space in between your lines. So for example, when I'm looking at the sextant, I'm seeing this A frame and trying to make sure that my A lines are neatly matched up in between and making sure that 
that space in between my actual drawing, the negative space, that is proportionate. So um, there's some really fun art exercises that you can do that basically includes like draw a square and then within the square like grab a kitchen object and try to draw it. So for example, um, a fork, lay a fork down and then you like imagine you're looking at the fork through a uh, frame and then draw within the frame. So you're paying a lot of attention to that negative space um, and not just the object. So object is symmetrical, negative space is symmetrical. Ta-da, your proportions work. It's great. But it's also a pain in the butt because it's not something I'm very good at. <laughs> and I'm putting the finishing touches and popping on over to do the at a glance. So I am setting up my weekly information here at a month level. So I've got week one, two, three. Um, I, I always start with week one, even if it's not a full week. So even though it's just Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm treating that as the first week. So I'll actually have 53 weeks um, by the end of this year, but um, that's just my way to keep things organized. And then the next thing is I'm setting up my mood tracker. So my mood tracker, I am calling it Navigate by Feel. Um, I couldn't come up with a super punny header for it this month. I, I tend to do super cute punny headers for my mood tracker. Um, one, one month I did a hedgehog theme and I said, feeling on hedge? Ha ha ha. Oh yeah, lame. Uh, but anyways, navigation, navigate by feel. And I'm doing a variety of instruments that are coloring book style. Um, and all of these are printables for Patreons or you can purchase it on Etsy. But I, I tend to gravitate towards the adult coloring book style um, for most of my bullet journal setups. Um, they convert fairly easily to printables, so then you can just take this and print it and color it in. Uh, I did not include the key in the setup. I always go back privately and set up my key. Um, it's not like it's anything that fancy. It's just basically a one through five, terrible, bad, okay, good, and great <laughs> kind of level. Um, and then color code it. So I will do that later, but I like to have... Um, I like to pick out colors that match the theme, so I'll probably do um, kind of a brassy color and some dark navy colors um, for my general theme for this month. But yeah, so I've got sundials and compasses, both in terms of the directional compass, but also the compass that's like, it's uh to, to draw circles you know apparently it's also called a compass it annoys me that it's one word for two different instruments but whatever um a ship steering wheel a quill binoculars a lantern um some pocket watches a globe some stars things like that so yeah putting way too much detail into something that I'm just going to end up coloring over. It's fine. It's fine. Adult coloring books are fun. <laughs> and then erase all the pencils and flip on over and I am ready to set up my December retrospective. So the retrospective is something that I do every month. Um, essentially, you're going to look back on the previous month and it's pretty simple there are just three questions it's uh what went well what didn't go well and how to improve um this is a concept that i get i work in software development and this is a concept from software development um agile scrum and retrospective are all kind of it's within the agile scrum framework um so i found it applicable to my daily life and i will i always set it up in my monthly setup and then I'm also setting up a spread for focus. I just like to be able to set an intention for each month. Oh, and actually this is where things are getting interesting because the focus is actually from, um, this is the view you would have through the sextant. So apparently I was watching lots of videos on this. Apparently how a sextant works is it's a bunch of lenses and um, filters and you look through the scope and you can usually like uh, get your direction off of the sun. So you look through the scope with filters on so you don't blind yourself at the sun 
and then you end up like moving the instrument down so it refracts the image so you have basically two images of the sun um, it's kind of like if you're in a car and you flip your rear view window or rear view mirror um, you get like two images of cars behind you it's basically that um, and so what you do is you move things around so that your second image of the sun is perfectly flat on the horizon and once you get it exactly on the horizon that's when you check your gauge and it tells you your angle and then you compare your angle to a table based on the time of day and it tells you your directions it's complicated and clearly gps works much better but it was kind of cool to learn about it and now i'm setting up my january goals spread i like to have a double spread for this because i have lots of goals and i like to be able to sketch out different goals and some trackers and do some planning um, so for this one i'm keeping it fairly simple in terms of the design just a telescope looking up at polaris and the big dipper and filling in the text leaving lots of space for uh, filling this out later for my own personal goals. And then also setting up a spread for my January work deliverables. I like to be able to set specific goals or deliverables that I'm gonna focus on for work. Um, that way I'm making sure that I am on target with some of my project plans or also if I don't have project plans that I have some clear metrics and goals and deliverables for me to work on that month um, so that when the end of the month comes, my boss says, Liz, what did you do? I can say, oh, I did things here, 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 all the things I checked off, totally. Um, instead of just being like, I swear I worked. I did something. What did I do again? I don't remember. So I like to be able to plan out what are the big ticket items that I'm going to deliver. And then I'm also setting up a quote page. And so the quote is, a ship is safe in harbor, but that is not what ships are for. And this is an aphorism that has been attributed to, I think his name is Shed. Um, Oh, this is where I meant to have information looked up already. Let's try this. Okay, so it is John A. Shedd. In 1928, he released a collection of aphorisms titled Salt from My Attic. And it included this one. And technically, I reworded it a little bit. Uh, the wording is, a ship in harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are built for. Um, I simplified it a little bit because uh, the I am and the rhythm and the half rhymes, like, it's just better this way. <laughs> um, so a ship is safe in harbor, but that's not what ships are for. Like I, I wanted that pattern in it. Um, so I butchered the saying, my bad. I was being high maintenance. <laughs> So with that said, we'll do the quick flip through. So we've got the cover page and my habit tracker. And at a glance and my mood tracker. And then my December retrospective and my focus and monthly intention. A spread for my January goals. My January work deliverables and a quote page. So thank you so much for joining me. I have all these printables available on Patreon and Etsy, and they will be linked below. Thank you all so much. Happy New Year and have a wonderful January. Bye.